Let's go ahead and pray. Ask the Lord to bless this time as we learn from the Word of God. As I pray aloud, would you guys just pray that God give us a great day of worship in His house. Lord, we love you. We thank you for today. Thank you for the rain we're going to get today and for the cool weather. Uh, Lord, it's just such a nice blessing to uh, Lord, just have this cool weather in June here in the middle of the desert. Just thank you for that blessing. Lord, we thank you for the a blessing last week of uh, Daniel and Kat's wedding and that they're safe and just do pray for them today as they travel home. Give them safe. Lord, I pray you just continue to bless them, bless them in a mighty way. Lord, I just thank you so much for the good week that you've given us, the blessings to serve you and minister. Lord, we just praise your name for, uh, Lord, just a chance to minister. Thank you that we get to come to, uh, Lord, such a wonderful building, the air conditioning and seats. And thank you for the wonderful breakfast we've already had today. And Lord, we just turn our hearts to you in prayer and preaching of your word today. I pray that as we lift your name on high, that you'd be glorified, that you'd just bless us today. Lord, I pray today for these requests that you just have a hand upon these folks. Uh, Lord, just pray for my friend Judy Greer, that you heal her body to be your will. Lord, if it not be, that you would just take her home quick, that she wouldn't have to suffer. Pray for their family. Thank you for Zoe Ward, this 11-year-old girl with, uh, diagnosed with this cancer. I pray that you would just take it away. Uh, Lord, for Cindy's request, Father, for Colby and for her friends, Maria, Marissa, Rosia, praying for their healing. Dave, do you cover his body? Trust you have your hand upon Miss Vita's request for Oki and Susie, my grandson Adrian, uh, Tammy and the Te Kepleys as they're away traveling, give them safety. And Lord, I just pray, pray, pray. You'll just bless our missionaries, pray for each and every one of them that you bless them as they preach the word today. Lord, bless this time of worship. Give me wisdom as I teach. Lord, pray to encourage our hearts this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. 272. How I love Jesus. 272. First and word first of how I love Jesus. how his testimony got him from being a prisoner, from being uh, someone who was a slave, to being the president. And we found in Daniel chapter 6, verses 1 through 3, that Daniel excelled through excellence. He had an excellent spirit within him. And it was this excellent spirit that God used to be a blessing to the empire. And 
King Darius, now we're in the Medes and Persian Empire, and in the Median Persian Empire, the King Darius came along and said, hey, this guy is going to be the man that rules the land. And he was second in command, but truly he was in command, as King Darius was just a figurehead, whereas Daniel was the one that ruled over the land. Last week we saw the enticement of the envious, as he was the second in command of all the land, those that were under him did not like him being in command. Uh, they were envious of his position and they wanted to have his position, so they were trying to do some enticing things to get Daniel in trouble. And so last week we saw that they had went to the king and said, King, would you sign a decree that only prayers and worship and sacrifices can be offered to you, O king? The king's like, man, that sounds awesome. Yeah, absolutely. All everybody who worships has to worship and bow down and pray to me. Uh, I like that. Let's make it a law. And so they made the law that, that way. But we know the reason they made that law was because the people that were under Daniel, the other presidents and other leaders, wanted to bring Daniel down. And it said this, folks. The only way that they could find a way to bring Daniel down was to get him in his worship of God. The only way we're going to get something on this guy that's going to bring him down is if we cause it to be illegal to worship his God. And uh, folks, I uh, maybe if the Lord allows, someday, I'd like to run for president. You say, well, that's stupid, Cody. Well, it's just something that if the Lord ever allows. My wife, now my wife doesn't want to do it, but maybe God will change your heart. You don't want to be president's wife. <laughs> so, um, but listen, if the Lord allows me to ever run for president or for politics, the first thing, the first thing those people are going to do is what? Attack me. They're going to say, this guy is a man of character. He's had a lifetime of reputation of service and love for people. We've got to find something about him that's going to pull him down. And so they're going to go through all my cell phone records, all my internet browsing. They're going to go through all these areas to find something to say, this guy is not who he says he is. And I'll just be the first one to admit, they'll probably find some things that they could accuse me of to bring me down. All right? Because I'm not perfect. I have my problems. I have my issues. And there's things that I've done in my life that I'm not proud of. Let me just tell you, all of us do. You're the pastor. You're not supposed to have shameful things in your life. Yes, I do. There are things that I'm going to be ashamed of when I stand before the Lord. Okay? I'm just being honest with you. Daniel, on the other hand, they didn't have internet to, to look at his browser. They didn't have, uh, you know, cell phone records to look at him. Uh, the only thing they said is we could pull him down is by getting it illegal to worship his God. And I just love the testimony of Daniel. And folks, I hope and pray in your life that you'll say, I want to have a testimony in my life like Daniel. Where people can look at me and say, you know what? That person loves the Lord. And they are sincere in the relationship with God. And their words and their actions and their thoughts and their desires all are to please the Lord. And that is a person that I'd like to be like. Or that's the reason that people don't like you is because of that. And I pray that that will be our testimony this morning. And so today we're going to look at Daniel's routine. Daniel's routine. I want to get this in our heads this morning. Okay. Daniel's routine, his righteous routine, was greater than remarkable religion. Lots of folks today are in church because it's their religion. It's their chance to go and feel good about themselves. It's a routine religion. And the difference between religion and a relationship with God or the routine that Daniel had is, uh, listen, when you're pressured... To really, you really believe this or not, you can tell whether you have a relationship or religion, okay? A religion is saying, hey, I'm not really that person. I just do that to make me feel good, and if you tell me to switch my religion, or you convince me to do this or that, I'll, I'll do it, okay? But when Daniel was pressured to change his relationship with God, he's like, no, this is, this is the one I love. Nothing you say, nothing you can do to cause me to go against the Lord, and folks, listen, this morning as we talk about this, maybe it'll be convicting in your heart to say, do I have a religion that is just lofty? You know, it's th someday it's this, someday it's that. Someday I feel like it, someday I don't. Or do I truly have a relationship with God 
that can shake it, nothing, okay? I compare it to my relationship with my wife, okay? No person, no act can cause me to go against my wife. Why? Because I love her dearly. She loves me dearly. We have a deep relationship. Now, if I was just, you know, meagerly interested in her, and it was like, you know, yeah, I have a, a distant relationship with her, but, you know, if something came along better, I'd be like, yeah, sure. You know, that's how religion is for most people. It's like, it feels good now, and what doesn't feel good, I'll do it, and then when I like it or when I feel bad, I'll go back to it. But listen, I'm talking about a relationship. Daniel had a deep, intense relationship. And his relationship was shown in his routine for what he did for the Lord. So let's just read these verses. Daniel chapter 6, verses 10 through 17. And I've only got 10 minutes to get through this, and so I'm going to go speedy uh, so we can get through this this morning. Daniel chapter 6, verse 10 through 17. I already talked about Daniel was the president. Daniel was uh, put in a trap last week to, uh, by the old, other leaders to get him to be pulled down. And now we're going to see that trap sprung. And, and now Daniel knew that the writing was signed. He went to his house and his windows being open and his chamber toward Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before God as he did aforetime. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. Then they came near and spake before the king concerning the king's decree. Hast thou not signed a decree that every man that shall ask a petition of any god or man within thirty days, save of thee, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, The thing is true according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which altereth not. Then answered they and said before the king that Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, regardeth not thee, O king, nor the decree that thou hast signed, but maketh his petition three times a day. Then the king, when he heard these words, was sore displeased. Darius loved Daniel. He didn't want Daniel to go down. He wanted Daniel to succeed. But he realized that what the decree he met was going to cause Daniel to be demised. And he tried to deliver Daniel. However, he labored till going down the sun to deliver him. Then these men assembled to the king and said unto the king, Know not, O king, that the law of the Medes and the Persians, that no decree nor statute which the king established may be changed. Then the king commanded and brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God, whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. And a stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet, and with the signet of his lords, that her purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. Daniel was a man who said, I'm going to do what's right, and what's right is what is right by the Lord. He did not have a religion. He had a deep, intense relationship with with the Lord. And the first thing I want to address here very quickly is this idea of going against the government. Okay? King said, the law of the land says, don't do this. And Daniel went and what? Did it anyway. And there are lots of folks, even myself years ago, would have believed that if the government says don't do it, I should go against it no matter what. Okay? We weren't too removed from this in COVID. When the authority says don't, we have a little bit of thing inside of us that's like, I want to be rebellious, and I'm going to do it anyway. And the government came around and said, hey, you guys can't worship in your building. Lots of folks said, ah, oh, no, you can't keep us from worshiping. You can't keep us from being uh, religion. And uh, they, lots of folks stood up against it and opposed that thing. Listen, the government wasn't saying, you can't worship God. They were saying, you can't meet about a certain amount of people in a building. You can still worship God, you just can't worship inside a building. And so lots of folks either stood against the government, and many of them were very nasty and very rebellious. Some people said, all right, you're my authority. You're not saying that I can't worship God. You're not saying that I should dishonor God. You're just saying I have to do things a little differently, like many churches have to do in Africa and in South America, where they go meet outside Amen. in the hot sun, in the, in the humidity, in the rain. They don't care. You tell them we're going to meet at the corner of uh, the busiest street, they're going to be there. Because they love the Lord and they don't care if there's a building, if there's air conditioning, if there's a chair. They're just going to worship the Lord. Folks, we have a situation here. And, and in Romans chapter 13, 1 through 7 says this. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive themselves damnation. That's all I have time to read this morning. Uh, you can go on to read the rest of it. It's very powerful. Uh, verses 1 through 7. Uh, says here, to tribute to whom tribute, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. 
Hebrews 13, 17 says, Obey them to have the rule over you. Who has the rule over you? Well, of course, God has the rule over us. God established this government. Government has the rule over us. Uh, those of us that are spouses, we have our spouses ruling over us. Okay? Listen, we have at, at, you know, all these areas of authority. We're to submit ourselves, for they must watch for your souls, and they must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief. That is unprofitable for you. The Bible is very clear. Even Jesus himself. When they said, hey, Jesus, should we give to the taxes? What did Jesus say? Yes, go pay taxes for me. Go down there, get a fish, bring it up, and put the tax in for you too, Peter. He says, tribute to him, tribute. Give to Caesar that which is Caesar, and render to God that which is God's. Okay? Now listen, folks. It is very clear that we are to submit and to respect our authorities. And I tell you, and I pray that you are, praying for our leaders daily. Praying for their salvation. Praying for them to make wise decisions. Pray that God would send people into our leader's path that would point them to Jesus. Okay? Our heart, our attitude should not be, well, I hope they go to hell, and I hope that they, you know, whatever. I hope they die. Our heart should be, I hope they receive Jesus as their Savior, and that they repent and receive Christ. That should be our heart for our leaders. And we pray, and we ask God to give us wisdom. Yet many times in Scripture, folks, we see godly people going against government. Moses did it. Elijah, Jeremiah, the disciples. When they did not obey the government, they seemed to have God's blessing upon their lives. I believe that we should obey our authority. But if our authority tells us to do something that dishonors God, then we are to honor God. Amen. This can get tricky and requires much prayer. If we do not have to dishonor authority, it must not be done. If we have to dishonor the Lord, we must do it respectfully. Say, you're causing me to dishonor God, and I have to honor the Lord. But we must have a respectful attitude towards our authority. Not this idea of, well, just put stick it in your mouth and shove it. Will you do what you want to do, government, because I'm going to do what I'm going to do because I'm a man of God. No, that's not authority. That's not respectful. Okay, when your words and your actions become disregarding to authority and disrespectful, you have dishonored and disrespected who? The Lord. And so if you have a heart, if you have a, a thought of being disobedient and disrespectful for your authority, okay, you have a wrong relationship with the Lord. But when you have a respectful heart of you, let's just go to this illustration very quickly. And I probably won't get to the rest of my lesson, but... I'll just stop here. Take the relationship of an unsaved husband to a wife. Okay? An unsaved husband and a wife who loves the Lord. She's saved. She loves the Lord. She desires to serve Him and to worship Him and praise Him. What do you do there? My husband says not to worship God, but I want to worship the Lord. He's supposed to be my authority. The Bible says submit to Him, but... Man, I want to serve the Lord. What do I do there, Pastor? That's a difficult situation. You're right. It is tricky. It is difficult. But do you know that the Bible says that your godly testimony and your godly witness of respect and reverence to your husband, or maybe it's a, a wife, a husband that's saved and a wife's not, your godly testimony, your godly witness could bring your spouse to God? As you reverence and honor and respect your spouse, and you... Show them a godly spirit, a godly attitude, a godly witness. They'll notice. They'll see it. And they're going to be spiteful, and they're going to be hateful, and they're going to make it hard on you. But you just do what? Trust the Lord. Pray for them. Respect them. Honor them. Serve them. And guess what? God's going to be glorified. They're going to be glorified. Well, well, what if he says, I can't go to church? Well, I, I think that if you're honor, honoring and respectful and servant and have a love for the Lord and have a love for your spouse, they'll make a deal with you. They'll say, hey, look, I love you, honey. Maybe, maybe this Sunday you don't go to church, okay? Maybe next Sunday uh, you can go to church, but I want to spend time with you today. Yes, sir. I respect you. Or if, you know, and vice versa, husband and wife. You respect and you honor and you love your leaders and your authority. And as you show that respect, as you show that honor, they will give that honor back to you. And God will be honored and God will be glorified in it. Listen, God gives us authority, okay? And we have to say, the Lord, this is my authority. And I reverence and I respect my authority. And I'm going to give honor to them, 
But if they're asking me to be dishonorable to God, to lie, to cheat, to steal, whatever it may be, I'm going to honor God first. Take my job at the CSD. Okay? My boss tells me to do something dishonest. Guess what? Sorry, I'm not doing that, sir. If I have to quit my job, I have to lose my job, I'll lose my job because I'm not going to dishonor the Lord. He's the one I serve and worship first and foremost. And folks, we have to honor the Lord, but we also have a humble attitude to be honoring and respectful to those people who are not honoring the Lord in our lives. And in that, we honor them, we honor God, and God is pleased. And maybe through your witness, as in the case with Daniel, his witness of respect and reverence for God turned the king's heart to who? To the Lord. At the end of this chapter, you'll see his, the king's heart is turned towards God. Because of what? Because of Daniel's faith and reverence and respect for the Lord. Now, I know we'll get to finish this lesson next week. I still have quite a bit to say about this chapter. Uh, but I hope and pray that that was encouraged with you this morning. Reverence, respect, honor, our authority. Pray for them. Pray for God to change their heart. But listen, if it comes time for us to, to dishonor our authority... Because they're asking us to dishonor God. We respectfully say, I can't. I have to serve and honor the Lord. And God will bless us as we do. Lord, we love you. Thank you for the chance to study your word this morning. Such a touchy, tricky subject. Lord, is in every single one of our hearts, Lord, because the devil is a desire to rebel. And God, we are Americans. It seems to be put in our blood that we are a little bit more rebellious. And uh, Lord, I pray that you'll help us, Lord, to keep our rebellion in check. That we would have a reverence and a respect for our authority. Lord, that we honestly and earnestly pray for our authority, whether it's our government, whether it's our spouse, uh, whether it's our boss. Lord, that we would pray desperately for their salvation, pray for them to make wise decisions. But God, when it comes time that we have to dishonor you, Lord, that we would be it respectfully and humbly say, I'm going to honor God. And Lord, that you bless us in those situations. Give us a good time as we study your word this morning of worship. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, folks. Thank you.